하니 All the, time. all the time. God is good. God is good. All the, all time. the time. All the time. God, God is, is good. good. In this place, O oh Lord, may from our mouth, Lord, comes all the worship and the praises that you are due, God. We give you honor and glory now and forevermore. May I invite you all to stand up as we start and worship.
together we see everyone sing oh holy is the lord god almighty the earth is filled with his glory Jesus light the way by the power of your word. I am restored, I am redeemed by your spirit.
Yes, Lord, we come before you this morning and we worship you. We glorify your name today, Lord God. Lord, in a week which has been unprecedented in so many ways, Lord God, a week where so much has changed, so much uncertainty has set in, Lord God, we fall at the feet of Jesus. And we say, Lord God, have your way, have your way this morning. Be exalted, O God, today we pray. Lord, we ask that you would be glorified, that you would be lifted high today, Lord Jesus. Lord, that your name and your renown would go forth from here to the nations, O Lord. Lord, we glorify and we magnify your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Why don't you take a seat this morning? As you sit down, why don't you give someone a high five next to you? Give someone a squeeze. Say welcome to church. Oh, always. Good morning, good morning, everyone. If you're in the house, it's good to see you. If you're online, it's good to virtually see you. Uh, we just want to say welcome to church today. It's uh, going to be a great time to, uh, yeah, think and ponder and remember. Uh, Her Majesty the Queen, but also uh, Will is going to be bringing the word today, which is going to be great. Um, we're just going to go through a few announcements, and then our, our kids and our young people are going to lead us. But I just wanted to kind of highlight that um, before we knew the events of this week, Tracy had put together the teaching for Blast. And one of the things that she realized this week was that this week's session was called... Karen pointed out that it's all about the next king, all about the succession of the next king. I tell you, God's timing is incredible, that we're not going to learn and we're not going to pray about it only here, but our kids and our young people are also going to be talking about what it means for the new king who comes into place. But this morning, we've got a few announcements. First of all, just want to say welcome if you're a first-time visitor. We love first-time visitors. We want to meet you. If that's you, there's a welcome desk out there. Come and see us. Come meet us. Get, a, get a, a little brochure from us, and we can hopefully connect you to the church. Uh, we have a prayer week starting uh, very soon on the 16th. And, well, it's technically a prayer 10 day, 10? Yeah, it's not really a week. A prayer 10 day. And uh, so we're starting uh, next Friday, I believe, uh, with a, yeah, whoop. I'm not hearing a whoop from my prayer director, which is amazing. So uh, I was expecting a whoop, whoop. But yeah, there's a, there we go. There's a uh, weekend of prayer happening uh, uh, on from next Friday. Then there's going to be uh, kicking off with morning devotionals, prayer evening on Wednesday night, um, and then a prayer rally at the end of the week on the Sunday. So make sure you come along. We really need to pray, don't we? We really need to pray. In these days, in these days when Jesus is coming back, we need to pray more than ever. We need to pray that thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We need to pray for the new king. We need to pray for those that are suffering. And we need to pray for breakthrough in Jesus' name. We're going to watch a little alpha video now, I believe. Uh, that's right. This old friend of mine, Helen. My best friend. My friend called and invited me to try Alpha. Y recuerdo que mi papá me dijo, mira, hay comida gratis, ve. And they handed me a invitation. It was just a random invitation. And I said like, why not, why not, let's try it. Why not, let's go. And I found like a, like a really awesome community of people. They helped me find who I was just by listening. Alpha helped me in the knowing of God. Empecé a entender que el amor I just knew. I was a different person from that moment on. I knew I had purpose. I, I felt really comfortable in like starting to invite my friends. 
I've seen Arthur really impact people that I work with. I would definitely encourage people to get involved. It's one of the coolest things I've ever experienced. It all turned out to be life changing. Awesome, we have Alpha coming up very soon, 27th of September. Who will you invite? That is my question to you. We already have, oh, sorry. We already have a few people that are, are signed up and have said they might be coming. But we want to see so many more. We want to see friends, family be invited. We've got so many leaflets out there that need to be distributed to the community. There's packs of 10 that you can take for your friends and family. So make sure you grab those. It's happening on the 27th at 7.30. Uh, is Pete in the house? Pete Valance. Come on up, mate. Good morning, folks. How on? So I'm good. <coughs> good morning, folks. Um, I'm up here very quickly to say, um, this is really just, just for the men. Um, men's work is starting back up again. 1st of October, men's breakfast. If you've never been before, I'd encourage you to come. Um, Thank you. Myself and Mark Jackson have, have taken over from Carl to try and lead it forward. And we're, we're um, my heart certainly would be that we engage all of the men of the church. Um, we have a real spectrum of men in this church. We range from young dads, who I can understand struggle to get out with young children, right through to the more senior, who have all the time in the world, dare I say, <laughs> and all those of us in between who are working. But we are all men, and we all have challenges in life, and I would like to bring a male perspective to perhaps the challenges of the Christian faith. So come and see me if you're not sure what I'm talking about. Hopefully you will have received an invite on a church suite if you're a member of the church. All you need to do is then click on that to sign up to come. But I want to talk about where we go from here on that first Saturday. So please, please come if you can. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Pete. So that's uh, geared relaunching. And uh, if, you're giving, uh, if you want to give this morning, please uh, yeah, see the various options on the screen. And also you can give by card at the welcome desk. Um, let's just pray for our young people. Why don't we stand up and then the piece is going to pray for our young people and our youth. Good morning, everyone. Hello. Okay, that's fine. Nice to see all of you. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for our children and youth. We thank you that you've blessed them with great teachers. And as they go for their session, we pray that you may be with them and help them to have fun and learn for your glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Off Amen. you go, guys. Right. See you. Going. You're going to be the first ones there. You've got loads today. Yeah. Woohoo.
Why don't we take our seats today? We're going to spend the rest of the time in reflection. And uh, we're going to spend a couple of minutes uh, right now watching a little video that's been put together as we remember Her Majesty the Queen. And I want you just to, we're going to spend a couple of moments with some prayers of liturgy. We're going to have a two-minute silence. And we're just going to commemorate. We're going to think and we're going to honor the lady that not only served us, the country, but she served the King of Kings, and she served him so well. So let's turn our eyes to the screen today. It's with profound it's with sadness, profound but, sadness also great but also great thankfulness that we remember that Her we Majesty remember Queen Her Elizabeth Majesty II, Queen Elizabeth II, served so faithfully. You served so faithfully. As Britain's longest as Britain's reigning, monarch, longest reigning okay. majority of us, uh, have, have never known a time when Queen Elizabeth II has not been Let's on the throne. Pause that. She has been a constant. She has presence. been a constant. Not sure why we got double echo there. Um, but yeah, let's just maybe invite Emma up to do some liturgy. The words will be on the screen, and uh, if you could say with me the words that are in bold and italic. Almighty God, our Queen is dead. Her long life is over, but you live forever. Our Queen is dead. Her long reign is over, but you reign forever. Our Queen is dead. Her loving service is over, but your love lives forever. We give you thanks that in your life, she shaped her life. Under your sovereignty, she fashioned her reign. In your loving heart, she found wisdom and peace. Forgive us when we didn't follow her example nor recognize the power of humble, Christ-like service. Strengthen our resolve to find our home in your heart and to live with wisdom, humility, and grace. Lord, your kingship surprises, for it is found in a manger and on a cross. And in this light, all earthly monarchs may find the wisdom to rule as your servant Elizabeth did so memorably. 
enable us to value her ministry in the way we serve one another, that she who reigned over us may live gloriously with you through Jesus Christ, our Saviour and Lord. Amen. Let us pray. For Queen Elizabeth and her exceptional reign, her deep affection for her people, her lifelong desire to serve the common good, her humility and grace, hard work and dedication. We thank you, living Lord. Be with the King and members of the royal family as they mourn the loss of a mother and grandmother as well as a friend of monarch. In the royal palaces, crown them with your loving kindness. Be with our national leaders, the government and prime minister at this time of uncertainty and change. In the corridors of power, crown them with your heavenly wisdom. Be with her people in the nation and commonwealth as they mourn a monarch and peacemaker and rejoice in the cultural diversity celebrated under her reign. In the four corners of her realm, crown us with peace and goodwill. Be with the hidden folk throughout the world who are struggling to make peace, longing for healing, grieving the loss of someone they love. In pain and grief, crown the nations of the earth with the light of your love. In silence, we remember with thanksgiving the life of Elizabeth, your servant and our queen, that she may rest from her labours and rejoice in the one whom she worshipped as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Almighty God, whose son Jesus Christ was crowned not with gold, but with thorns, and whose blood was shed to give life to the world. Crown us with your love, that we may serve one another with humility and joy, and your kingdom come with peace on earth, through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, now and forevermore. Amen. We're just going to observe a two-minute silence now as we think upon the service of Her Majesty the Queen.
eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we bless your holy name for all that you have given us in and through the life of your servant, Queen Elizabeth. We give you thanks for her love of family and her gift of friendship, for her devotion to this nation and to the nations of the Commonwealth, for her grace, dignity, and courtesy, and for her generosity and love of life. We praise you for the courage that she showed in testing times, the depth of her Christian faith, and the witness she bore to it in word and deed. Accept our thanks and praise, we pray, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's just spend a couple of moments, if anyone would like to pray, and just thank God for a life well lived. And maybe we can take a moment to also pray for those that have been left behind and for our now King, King Charles, who stepped onto the throne. Let's spend time in prayer together. Lord God, we think of all those that are left behind. Lord, we think of the royal family who are mourning the loss. Lord, we think of the hundreds and millions of people that are feeling the loss of the queen at this time. Lord, we pray that you would be their comfort. Lord, may you bring a peace that surpasses all understanding to guard their hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Lord, for the for the now king, King Charles. Lord, we pray, Father, that as he's come into, into his position as king, oh God, we pray, Father, that you would anoint him and that you would bless him. Father, that you would make his, your face to shine upon him, oh God. Lord, that he would follow you as, as dearly and as nearly as his mother showed to so many. Father, that he may follow your example, he may follow your way, and he may lead this country and this commonwealth in integrity, and in truth, and in love, we pray. Lord, we ask that you would bless and honor the royal family right now. Lord, we thank you for their years and years of service, their years of commitment. And Lord, as they mourn, as they grieve, Lord God, may they grieve, and may we join with them as they grieve. But Lord, we thank you that the morning comes, uh, that the morning comes in the evening. <laughs> Lord God, joy comes in the morning. And so, Lord Jesus, we thank you that we will celebrate a new day. We will celebrate all that you are yet to do in and through this monarchy, in and through this country, in and through your people here on earth, oh God, we pray. Build your kingdom here, Lord Jesus, we pray in your name. Amen. We would like to show, uh, just to draw your attention, that if you would like to uh, send a message of condolence, please make sure that you... Join. We didn't want to have our own book. We wanted to point you to the Royal Family's book, which is online. You can either take a snapshot of, of that QR code or visit the online page and share your condolences to the family as they are going through this time of suffering. Do we have the video at all, or is it uh, a no starter? I'm guessing it's a no starter. We're going to have something a bit different. We're going to stand together and we're going to do the national anthem and we're going to sing it according to the new king. We're going to sing God save our gracious king. Let's stand up together as we honor the man who's come in and as we honor God.
Lord God, you provide for your people by power. You rule over them in love. Grant your servant, our king, the spirit of wisdom and discernment. That being devoted to you with his whole heart, he may so wisely govern. That in this time he may live in safety and in peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So God grant the living grace to, depart, the, to the departed rest. To the church, the king and the commonwealth and all humankind. Peace and concord. And to us and all his servants. Life everlasting. And the blessing of God Almighty. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. We're going to have one more song now before uh, Will comes and speaks. So let's uh, take this time to also take our offering if our stewards could serve us, please.
Yes, Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you that out of the clay that we were, you made us your vessel of honor. Thank you for your wonders in our lives and all that you do. And now as we are going to hear your word, we pray that you may bless Will as he brings it. May you help him to speak with authority and power. And, and may you give us ears to hear what you say. For your glory and honor. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Please be seated. Thank you to the team uh, for Stuart and Lapice and leading us this morning. Which is, it has been a very sad week, hasn't it? Um, Tracy and I, we were on holiday and um, sat watching the TV, uh, hearing that the, uh, the medical team would gather around. Uh, the Queen and people were being called up to come and see her and, and just knowing what was going to happen. But when you get that text, or we get a message through on my phone which just said, the Queen has died. It was just a huge sense of sadness because we had lost someone who was so... Um, such a focus. Someone who had been such a great example to all of us. And uh, this morning... We're going to think about a little bit about her, but um, before I went on holiday, uh, two weeks ago, I prepared a message and thought, um, and I still feel it's appropriate today, actually, to bring this message, slightly changed. But um, it's interesting, when people talk about the Queen, they talk about a number of things. You hear a number of words, don't you? You, you hear the word duty, and you hear the word service, and the words faithfulness. And it's true, she has reigned this country for 70 years and she has been so faithful in what she's done. She has fulfilled her duty, the duty that she promised all those years ago. But also people have talked about her faith. And I think for many people, when they talk about faith, they think this is what she believes. You know, she believes a number of things. But what is really clear is that her faith was more than just a set of beliefs. Um, one of my friends has, in his church, uh, one of the Queen's chaplains who'd retired. And he said to the pastor there, he said, do you know what, she has a real faith in Jesus Christ. She has a real relationship. You know, she's not just wearing a badge as a Christian, but she has that relationship with Christ. And I don't know if you read it, the one about uh, the chaplain talking about the second coming. The fact that she wanted to lay her crown at his feet. She was hoping that Jesus would come back in her lifetime so she could do that before her saviour. And so we know that the queen had a, a real faith and, um, and that faith produced fruit. And we see that across the, across the years, don't we? Across our country and within her family, the fruit that she is born through the faith that she has. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. I want us to talk about fruit and I can ask you a question, how fruitful is your life today? If you claim to be a Christian, what kind of fruit are you producing for God and for others? And so if you have a Bible, um, I would like you to turn to uh, John chapter 15. I'm going to read from verses 1 to 9. If you haven't got a Bible, um, there are some over there, or you can look up on your phone, your iPad. Um, but I just want to read these words. So the background to this is that Jesus uh, had been in the upper room with his disciples. He'd washed their feet. That was John chapter 13. Jesus begins to teach them. Um, and he says, I'm the only way. I'm, I'm the only way to get to God. He talks about the Holy Spirit. And they have uh, suffered together. And then they leave, John chapter 14, end of John 14, they leave and they start to go to the Garden of Gethsemane. But it's reckoned that as they walked along, Jesus taught them. And uh, we find these words in John chapter 15. He says, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. 
Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. So some great words from Jesus. We're going to kind of unpack that. And uh, I want to just ask you, by, to you, to do a bit of a checkup this morning. Um, Tracy and I, we came back from holiday yesterday, so had to get the washing on and all those kind of things. So I had to leave early. And I thought, well, Tracy's getting ready. What I'll do, I'll go upstairs and I'll kiss her goodbye. Um, and so up, yep. And as I did, she then stood me still and looked at me. She said, I need to check you over. And I can find this more and more, you know. She wants to make sure that when I go out the door, that I look my best. Now, that's really hard to do these days. But she kind of checked me over and said, oh, dear. you got some blood. I obviously shaved. I got a little bleed, so she had to get that off. I felt like I was five years old <laughs> being checked over by my wife. But this morning, what I want to say to you, the reason I've said that is because I want you to have a look at your life and answer those questions seriously. Are you bearing fruit for God in your life? What difference does your life make for God and for the world? Because we've talked about Queen Elizabeth and and we can see the difference that her life has made. Yes, she had a high place and she used that for God. But you have a place and God wants to use your life for him. You see, we think about fruit, don't we? Fruit, the, the, the fruit that's produced is not for the vine it's not for itself it's for others and so your life the fruit that God wants you to produce perhaps is not for you but it's for other people so what fruit are you bearing and so we're going to look at the words of Jesus and see what he says because you see Jesus said I am the true vine now to the people listening they would have understood that because um Israel had been called divine as well. And if you like a bit of Bible study, go to Isaiah 5, verses 1 to 7. And it will talk about the vine and God's vine. And it says, I will sing for the one I love a song about his vineyard. My loved one had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He dug it up and cleared it of stones and planted it with the choicest vines. He built a watchtower in it and cut a wine press as well. Then he looked for a crop of good grapes, but it yielded only bad fruit. So when Jesus talked about the vine, people kind of, yep, I know that. That's a bit of the Old Testament. I understand. And what Jesus was saying was actually, Israel was not a good vine, but I am the true vine. I am the vine. This was the last of Jesus' great I ams. And he's telling the people, telling his disciples, I am the true vine. And it's through me you can bear fruit. So I've got three things to say this morning. Firstly, about potential. Jesus said, I am the true vine. My father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. So Jesus is saying to his disciples, actually, guys, you're not a great bunch of people. You know, if you look at them, they all have their kind of problems. But he's saying to these people, If you remain in me, you will bear fruit. You have potential. Now, some people talk, some people think this passage relates to, if you look at verse 6, it talks about if you don't remain in me, you'll be thrown away and thrown into a fire. But it's not talking about the loss of salvation. In fact, as people say, it actually could be talking about Judas, because he's talking about discipleship here. But what it's talking about is how people can appear to be connected and not actually bear fruit. Do you know what percentage of people in this country or in England claim to be Christian? What kind of percentage do you think that is? I did the little bit of uh, Googling 
and 59.4% of people in our country claim to be Christian. Okay? I worked out that in Basingstoke, that would mean that 111,840 people would be at church today. That's amazing, isn't it? It would mean that of the 50 churches in our town, they would have to have 2,200 people in each church, which means that we would need to run 10 services a day to get everybody in. How exciting is that? Whew, Stuart, you'd be worn out. 10 services today. Could you imagine? Amen. He's looking forward to that. But you see, people can claim to be Christian. If you, if you want the stats for, for, for Northern Ireland, it's 82.3%. Scotland only 53.8%. And Wales is 57.6% of people who claim to be Christian. And yet you would say, probably not. Because church attendance is what? 5%. Of our population, possibly six, maybe to eight, I don't know. But it's not great. So there may be people today who claim to be Christians and are not. But what Jesus is talking to his disciples about is he's talking about the fact that they will bear fruit. Their future, if they remain in him, is to bear fruit. They will be history makers. They'll be world changers. They are going to bear fruit. The question is, what is fruit? When Jesus was talking about fruit, what did he actually mean? Well, if you read your Bible, you can say there are a number of things that we could say are the fruit that God wants for us to bear. One is evangelism. Okay? And what do I mean by that? It means about sharing your faith, giving your faith away to other people. I wasn't here last week, but I hear we had a giveaway last week. We had these given away. Okay, how many people took one? I wasn't here. But these are to give to other people. A form of evangelism, sharing about the Alpha Course so that people can hear about Christ. If you didn't get some, I only left you. Great, just a couple of hundred. Um, if, you, if you don't want to give them to your people you know, there are loads of those things to be delivered all over Basingstoke. We've gone large on our delivery because we, we got a good deal on the printing. So we need to be evangelistic. We need to share what we have with other people. Secondly, we could talk about uh, holiness and obedience. When it comes to holiness, when it thinks about choosing what is godly, against what is ungodly, obeying the word of God. Paul in uh, Romans talks about giving, being fruitful, our giving, giving away what God has given us, the resources he's placed in our hands. Galatians 5 talks about a Christ-like character. Your life should look like the life of Jesus. Does it? Do you say the kind of things he would say? Colossians 1 talks about fruit being good works. Worship is another form of, of fruit. Do our lips and our hearts worship God? Is that the fruit of our lives? Are we people who are loving? Are we people who are obedient? What should a Christian look like? We used to joke years ago, it was always about sandals and socks. And if that's you, I do apologize. But it's almost like you could tell what a Christian looked like. Perhaps carrying a Bible. Jesus says that by their fruits you will know them. And that should be true of us as God's people. Are we loving? Are we generous? Do we have the power of God working through us? These are questions to ask ourselves. And if you look at the life of Queen Elizabeth, I don't want to put her on a pedestal, but you could see those traits. There was a life of integrity, a life of service, a life that bore much fruit. I'm going to show you a picture. Woohoo, this is from my garden. Okay, as you can see, uh, this is my strawberry plant. Okay, 
On the left is my strawberry plant. Do you know, I had this um, Groupon thing come through. That's always a problem, isn't it? Groupon. Okay. And it was 12 strawberry plants. No, 24 strawberry plants for £12. I thought, that sounds a great deal. What I'll do is I will buy 24 strawberry plants and I'll share them with my children. And we'll all have strawberries for the summer. So my £12 went off and these little things that just look really weird came back and we planted them and we watered them and they all died. <laughs> Except one, which is the strawberry plant that you can see with huge leaves. It's great, isn't it? It looks really good. Do you want to know how many strawberries I've had from it? Don't be silly. I got more than one. I had four. <laughs> so I worked out that every strawberry I ate cost me three pounds. <laughs> so next year, when Groupon writes to me and says, do I want a strawberry plant? The answer will be no. Interesting, isn't it? Because actually, it looks good. And if I didn't tell you how many strawberries I had, you, you'd say, oh, well, you've done really well. That's a really nice strawberry plant. But there's no fruit. On the other hand, this is my apple tree, and you can't see it because the picture's rubbish, but it is covered in apples. Apparently a good year for apples. Absolutely covered. It is bearing so much fruit. And I suppose my question to you is, which one would really represent your life? Four strawberries? Or a massive harvest of fruit? Because Jesus says that we all have the potential to bear fruit. But not just fruit, but more fruit... And then you'll see later on, he uses the word much fruit. So your life has the potential to bear much fruit. So which one are you? I need to move on because we have got to do a little bit more Bible study. The next question I have for you is, um, totally lost where I am, is the whole thing about what is the process of bearing fruit? What is the process. The process involves two things. And firstly, it involves remaining. Now, the words of Jesus, he talks about remain in me. He says, if I remain in you, remain in the vine, remain in me. It goes on and on about remaining. In fact, 11 times in this passage, Jesus talks about remaining. And if you, if you read your King James Version, the word would be abide. And so what Jesus is saying is actually there is a place where we need to be to bear fruit. And that is we need to be connected to the vine. We need to have that connection with Christ. And if we do, then we will bear fruit. We'll bear more fruit and much fruit. And here comes a simple question. How is your connection when it comes to him? Because Jesus gives this very stark warning. He says, if you don't remain in me, apart from me, you can do a little bit. A small amount. He uses the phrase, apart from me, you can do nothing. That's quite shocking, isn't it? Because we think with, our, you know, with maybe some of the gifts we have and the talents, we have, perhaps we can achieve something. But he says, if you're ne not connected to me, you can do nothing. So how is your connection? We all want to be connected in today's world, don't we? If you, if you want to check your phone, see if you've got your... How many bars have you got? Have you got 4G? Have you got 5G? Have you got 3G? I have to say this church's connection is rubbish. We've only got 3G on my phone. Goodness me, where I live, I've got 5G. Ooh, yeah, it's really fast. Here it's rubbish. How is your connection? Are you connected to Jesus? And how do we connect to Jesus? We connect to Jesus through obeying his word. And that's clear. We find that if we obey him, we love him. 
but through our obedience, we will bear fruit. If we're in connected to Jesus, we can do that through prayer. We have a very exciting com- time coming up. Woohoo! Yes! Thank you. We have a prayer week or 10 days. I don't know how you. But on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we have 48 hours of prayer. Do you know how many people have signed up so far? It's not as many strawberries. Oh, it's the same number of strawberries as the number of people who've signed up for prayer. Okay? And here we are, a church of probably 70 people sat here, and four people are going to pray next weekend and try and cover 48 hours. You see, the thing is, what, what you're thinking is, well, I'm going to pray, and you know, I'll talk to God about the world and the church. But actually, when we pray, when you take an hour out of your life to sit down and pray, what are you doing? You are connecting. And that's what we need. We need to connect. If we want to bear fruit, we need to pray. We're going to have a retreat on the 24th of September out at Moore's Hangar. You can come along. You can have three hours with God. And lunch. And it's free. Why haven't you signed up? I can tell you there's more people signed up than strawberries on my strawberry plant. Hallelujah. But we got room for loads more. So sign up and come and spend time with God. Do you know what? I have never been invited to come and see the Queen. I don't know, wasn't on the list. But daily I get an invite to go and spend time with the King of Kings. Don't I? Don't you? In fact, he's waiting for you. Let's take time and connect with God through prayer. And then lastly... Our devotion to God. We, we become fruitful as we are devoted to him. We connect with him when we give him our lives. Somebody wrote to the Queen, we will never forget her warmth, compassion and devotion to duty. She demonstrated extraordinary dedication and commitment to duty through her reign and did so with graceful strength and admir- admirable admirable determination great words isn't it that you could write about someone and the life she led I wonder what they'll say about us when we die what will the words be used when people write about us at our funerals will they say he was someone who was connected to Christ that he had a life of obedience a life of prayer a life of commitment and devotion to his God I pray they will. So we need connection. But the other thing we also need is we need pruning. Hallelujah. We like a bit of pruning, don't we? How many people here call themselves gardeners? Oh, yeah, quite a few of you. How many of you like a bit of pruning? Yeah, you see? You gardeners, you get out there and you scan it back and make it. But why do you do that? Is it because you're, you're sadists? No, because you want things to grow properly. You want to have life and abundance, don't you? And so, the father is the gardener, and it says this in verse 2. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. So pruning, you're cutting back the dead wood, but also you're cu- cutting back the live wood so there'll be more fruit. And um, we could talk ages about vines and how that, that process happens and how long it takes to become a, a proper gardener, a proper... I've got a wasp flying around me. Uh, a, proper, a proper vine keeper, or what you want to call them. Um, but actually, you see, when it comes to growth and life, Sometimes we need to be pruned. Um, I did an an online morning with some of the church leaders. And um, we started to talk about being fruitful. And then I said to them, what in in your life has God pruned? And that was really interesting. Because for some of them, and and me included, I would say one of the areas of pruning has has been through health. That actually, you know, we're all wanting to get up and go. And sometimes God slows you down. He puts things in your life and you, you, your body's not quite doing all the things you wanted to do. And you suffer health issues. And, and it's almost like God says, I want you to slow down. For some of it, it's failure. 
I spoke to one leader who said I, I had to move on from a church. They basically sacked him. He says, I don't know why. And there was the whole sense of being pruned by God. But actually the pruning meant that he moved on to a much more fruitful environment. And for some it's disappointment. The things that you really hoped were going to happen haven't happened. And it's like God has cut something away. There is a saying that growth follows the knife. And I think as I look back on my life, <clears throat> there have been times that have been really hard. But what I have known is I've had known God's presence and God's help and God's strength in a way I would never have known if life had been easy. And so often we ask the question, why is this happening to me? And I've always said that is the wrong question. Because what we need to ask is, what is God doing in my life? Because God always has his purpose. God always has a plan. And maybe God is pruning us to cut things away so that growth can come. There's two things. I, as I was thinking about this, um, being on holiday in Cornwall, saw a lot of sheep. And um, I was thinking about this, that, that, that actually... that. Uh, also, as I, I was doing my Bible studies, um, Isaiah 40 came up. And it's great verses, Isaiah 40, you know, and we're going to run and not grow weary and all that kind of stuff. But in verse 11, it says, He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs into his arms. He carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. And that's a beautiful picture, isn't it, of God being the shepherd and carrying us. We're close to his heart. I remember when I was at Bible College, um, I, uh, we had to do a study on Isaiah 40 and, and the shepherd. And, um, and uh, I remember I found this passage or found this in a, in a commentary where it talked about how the shepherd always looked after his sheep. And the trouble was that sometimes the sheep would run, run off. They would hear his voice and be disobedient. Anybody like that here? None of you, of course. But you see, the sheep would run off, or the lamb would run off. And the, the, what happened, the shepherd had to teach the lamb not to run off. And what he did, and this doesn't sound very nice, but he broke the leg of the lamb. Ouch. Which meant that the lamb could not run off. But what he did was he then put the lamb on his shoulders. And he carried the lamb. And for me, as we talk about being pruned, I kind of see, and maybe you don't see the link, but I see the link that actually sometimes life, stuff in life needs to be broken. Stuff in life needs to happen to us that actually we're closer, we're picked up and we're closer to our Heavenly Father. We're close, closer to Christ. And we see that too in, in the words of 2 Corinthians. It's also been on my kind of reading list uh, at the moment where Paul says that he, he had a messenger from Satan, a thorn in the flesh. And three times I pleaded with the Lord, take it away from me, but he said, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. And therefore I will boast all, more, all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. As we think about life, sometimes life is tough. And maybe God is pruning us, but God wants our lives to be more fruitful. He will draw us closer to himself through those difficult times if we let him. And then lastly, let's just finish by talking about the blessings of fruitfulness. Okay, here we go. There are loads. We could go on and on and on about the blessings of fruitfulness. I've put down three, I think. First one is God is glorified. God is glorified. What does that mean? It means that as people look at your life, they see something of God in you and think that is really good because God is good. And we can say that Queen Elizabeth II, her life brought glory to God and continues to do so. I was watching the, the service at St. Paul's. I think it was Friday. I'm kind of lost track of the days, really. And just ordinary people invited, 2,000 ordinary people just to come in and be part of a service. And I thought, here is God being glorified through a person's life. 
I think what I hoped is that that would be repeated throughout our country. That actually as she brings glory to God, that people are drawn to God. They will come into churches. They, at the, the funeral service, they will see something of God in all that's going on. Because it's interesting, isn't it? In all the, the, the kind of rituals and, uh, and, and traditions that are being talked about, how often do we hear about God? So much. You can see the crown and the Church of England and God, they're all connected. And let's pray that through this process, God is glorified and that people are drawn to him. That the Holy Spirit takes what is happening and speaks into people's lives. The second thing we can say is that prayers are answered. It says, in, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given to you. Hallelujah. We want to see prayers answered, but we can do that as we are connected to Christ. John 14, verse 13, John 5, verse 7, John 16, verse 23, all say that we will have our prayers answered, that God will give us what we ask for. So let's start to ask. If we're connected, God will hear us and answer our prayers. Verse 11, let's have the next one, please, Dave. It's joy will be complete. He says, I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Going back to, what does a Christian look like? Some people are giggling because some people know that Christians don't always look particularly joyful. But you do today. Can I say? You will look good today. Because what Jesus is saying is if you're connected to me, you remain in me, your life will be one of joy. And interesting, isn't it? Let's look at the phrase he says. He said this, that your joy, my joy may be in you. Okay? That's pretty good, isn't it? To have God's joy in your life. It should make you smile a little bit. Shouldn't it? Okay. And then it says, and that your joy may be complete. Okay, so you don't get a little bit of joy. You get a lot of joy. In fact, your joy is complete. Amen. Give us a smile. Hallelujah. Oh, my goodness. Whew. You've got no excuses to be miserable. True? Nothing. Even with a bad, poorly leg at the front. Happened for a reason. Happened for a reason. Eh? How many weeks off work? <laughs> you got a desk job. Good for you. Keep working. But there's, this, is, this is amazing stuff, isn't it? That Jesus is saying your joy will be complete. And then here's a clincher. I got this one as well, Dave. Next one. Friendship. Okay? How's your, how's your Facebook looking these days? How many people are you friends with? Okay? I have to tell you, none of them are as important as this person. The important person of Jesus. Let's just hear, hear what he says. He says, This is my command. Love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lays down his life for his friends. You are my friends. Wow. Does that blow you away? Okay. QE2. I shouldn't say that. It sounds disrespectful. QE2. How many friends did she have? How many people could say, I'm her friend? Probably hundreds, maybe thousands. But it's not you and me. Whereas we have someone we can call a friend who is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And he says, you are my friend. Wow. What amazing words from Jesus our Saviour. I want to finish with verse 16 of chapter 15, which I didn't read you. It says this, you did not choose me, but I chose you 
and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. You see, why do you think you're a Christian? Eh? Why? Because Jesus loves you. Yeah? And he gave his life for you. Yeah? Amen. Does it stop there? No. Because actually what Jesus is saying is, I've saved you. You're my friends. Yes? But I have appointed you to come to church every Sunday and sit in the pew and look at me and his Stuart playing. No. He's appointed you for a reason. What is that reason? So that your life can be fruitful, that you can be a blessing to God and a blessing to the people around you. Wow. God has chosen you to bear fruit, fruit that will last. And how are we doing? Are we a strawberry plant or are we an apple tree? My prayer is that we will hear the words of Jesus and we will say, yes, Lord, I want to bear fruit. And not just fruit, but more fruit. And much fruit. And that means we need to connect with our Savior. And maybe for some of us today, we need to reconnect. Should we pray together? Father, we thank you for these amazing words of Jesus. We thank you that he declared that we are his friends. And Lord, we, we just relish in that. We just love that fact that we can be called the friends of Jesus. But we thank you too, Lord, for that connection we can have with our Savior. And I want to pray today for your church, Lord. As we enter this phase of being released into this world as the church, I want to pray, Father, that for each of us, that we would connect with our Saviour. We would spend time in his presence. We would obey his word. We would follow his word. And that we would bear fruit for you. Lord, may our fruit be shared with others. May that fruit impact the world around us. May it bring glory to God. May it change our world. And we pray this now in Jesus' name. Amen. It's going to end with one song. Why don't we stand together? Yeah.
Father, we thank you for that unending love and that amazing grace. Lord, that we can sing that our chains are gone. We have been set free. And Lord, we pray that our lives and our testimonies would bear fruit. Lord God, as we show your goodness and your mercy wherever we go. May we be Jesus. His light, his salt. In every circumstance, in every situation. Lord God, we again remember the the royal family at this time, oh God, be with them, we pray. May your comfort and peace be upon them. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much for coming this morning. You've got tea and coffee as usual. And next week we have our International Sunday. So don't forget to come along and join us as we celebrate all that God is doing in the church. Amen. <laughs>